they're going to come and take all eight people, including me. They're going to grab us up and something. Uh, it was it was threatening. Exactly. I did have to say to him, like, what you're saying sounds awfully fucking weird, dude. Why don't you explain it to me? And then he says, and then he says to me, don't try to call me back. Don't try to do, do, do. Don't try to fucking leave another message, dude. Like, we're sick of you. This is last night. And then the night before last is where the Dean Summers video with the shotguns and he's in a storage unit and then he goes to um, Burns pointing his finger at a lineup and he's pointing his finger at Tom Grant but not me was this guy who messaged you Zachary McQuaid what's that now so I'm sorry because I can't hear was this people. guy who messaged you was his name Zachary McQuaid no, I think I've got messages from him. He's the guy you told me not to deal with to give him an interview, and I didn't. So I talked to him, but I didn't give him the interview, and then I've blown him off since. Because all these interviews are turning out to be just bullshit anyway. So I mean, like, they're all turning it, 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 No matter what, I'll do the lie detector test, whether it's out of art. But Ryan says it's close to $10,000 with a qualified and certified guy i did talk to the fbi they want they're not going to do it for me um i well, talked to the fbi and i never mentioned your uh, our arguments but i did mention dean summers going out of my properties now three times yeah. so that i i do take it as a threat am i worried like about it i do worry about if he goes and gives my address out let's say there's somebody in texas who's just a fucking well, you no, know, don't worry about wrong. Dean Summers. Now I'm just like, what the fuck? So you got three people from Who Killed Kurt that are even come after you? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm going to send it to you. It came last night, so you'll be able to read it yourself. Oh. And he says that all eight of you, like, motherfuckers, fuck you guys. And he goes, there's something here that people don't even know about. He says, it, it's a, I got to send it to you right now. Let me just find it off right. my... Sounds good. My, it's, it's, and I'm, listen, I'm going, bouncing from... Facebook to Messenger, Messenger to Messages, to pop it all over the fucking place, and I am. All right, look, man. Well, I'm gonna tell no, you straight up. Me, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm gonna back the fuck up off you for real. All right, I will. But, dude, well, I, you're gonna get everything you want. It's well, just gonna take time. Yeah, it's I everything. understand that. But like, you know, if fucking a year and a half, two years goes by and nothing's been done, dude, obviously there's gonna be some more questions raised. Well, of course there will be, but it's. it's I didn't even think about this until, I guess it was July when Dean Summers... And look, no, no, because I didn't get the photograph from... And look, I'll be, I'll be fucking honest ago. with you, dude. If I had the money, I would easily, peasily drop it on a fucking polygraph for you. Well, but I that's would think Chris Todd if he wanted... But Ryan said he wanted to get his guys to do it. And for some reason, they're backing out. They're just... They're not so interested in it that way. So I do believe that Ryan did talk a little too... Um, um, but, but I still will do it. I will absolutely do it. It's just, man, I can't come up with ten grand to do it, and that's what I thought it would be—a few grand. He said it's like ten, and so on that note, just hang in there. We'll get it done by somebody. will get it done. And uh, it is what it is, man. I understand. It is what it is. There is just more than enough proof. I was in Los Angeles with Ryan on his fifth birthday. You can see those. That's his fifth birthday. That would be. Then 94, that's 94. That's so, five candles, though. I thought you said it was his sixth birthday. No, he was, it was five candles. He was born in 89. So 90 to 94, five. All right, okay. Well, he's born in 89, April 4, April 6, 1989. So 1990 is one to four is five, five candles. Right. Then I got to talk to him because he did say that there's some photographs in there about that talk about the the hair show thing. And when I looked up the hair show, there was going to be an international beauty conference, and that is what I thought I went there for. But it wasn't until a week later. So why would I have showed up a week early? And I'm telling you with all candor, the only thing I can think is that maybe we went early but I, not a week early there's just no way well, so who the fuck said you showed up a week early I've never said that no, I've always no, no. assumed that you, you showed saying, up I'm just telling you so I've always assumed I you said, showed up on April 7th listen or, I've been in Seattle 
many times now because I'm a truck driver, was a truck driver. So then I worked in a place in, um, um, anyway, that was just recently. Um, at that time, in 94, and up until the time that I divorced Linda was 96. So between that time, we were in Seattle twice, once for a hair show, and once we took a motor home to go visit family at Moses Lake, Washington. And that's not that in, that's not that time. We did, at that time, we had a Jaguar XJS, a brand new one. And I can't remember if we drove our own car or if we flew and rented a car, but I'm pretty sure we would have flown and rented a car if it was a hair show. Can you explain to me what a hair show is? I am having a hard time on exactly the exacts. So when I looked it up, the only hair shows we would have gone for would have been for like a Tony and Guy. What the fuck is a hair show? Can you explain to me what Okay, these hair shows, they're, look, do you know who Sebastian products are? Sebastian International? Do you yeah, that? sure. It's like another Tresemme or something. Like what they do, you like a Tresemme or like a bio, um, a Biolage, um, Matrix, Biolage. Right. They have platform artists. These are hairdressers get on stage, and they cut some wacky haircuts. They do some color, you know, and it's and you drink champagne and you know you kick back. It's a show. It's like yeah. a fashion show. Gotcha. So I do believe, and I tried to find it, but I couldn't find. I think we went for a Tony and Guy, which was a week before the International Beauty Show, but I can't find it. I just can't. Ryan said in his storage, when he took those pictures out of the storage, he didn't take out the um, photographs of the hair show. He said something like, if you watch the video that he did, and he's very candid in the reason he has all the documentation, like his mom well, just gave him. I'll right tell here. you what, one thing about those photos is they don't show any dates. Like, that party could have been any day, any time. Well, it, it doesn't really prove birthday. anything. It was his fifth birthday, bro. Then that's there was several. There was one party on his day. That was the Ninja Turtle cake. That was a private cake for me and Linda and Ryan on his birthday, April six. But the weekend before was he had the friends over. So there wasn't many friends, but so it also shows the, another cake. What day was the Five. friends over party? Yeah, just as he said that there was school, but he wasn't even in school yet. They were just neighborhood kids or whatever, the few kids. So would that be like the second he had that or what? Like around the second, yeah. So. And then what day did you guys have? I would have been working at the salon. So in 94, I opened my salon, Altered Images, in 92, in Encino, in 1992, yeah. Ryan was born he was at the syndicate salon is where he linda got pregnant when i managed and i owned a portion of a salon but we closed that then we went to another salon in encino and linda was pregnant there and then that's where she had the baby at the syndicate but i opened my own shop in 92 so let's see i finished at cabot i ran it from well, look, man, I'm going to tell you right now, your fucking issue here is what the fuck were you doing on the 3rd, 4th, and the 5th? That's not just for me. That's for anybody. That's I was working. I simply was working in my salon. There'll be so many witnesses. I mean, there was people from the salon at Ryan's birthday parties because they know him from birth and were close with them. Yeah, there's, there's just no doubt about it, dude. I did not go fly into Seattle, kill Kurt Cobain, fly home. There's, it just didn't happen. There's, you can kind of think that maybe I'm lying to you. I'm not. No, you know, I kind of got into a point where I'm not I'm not convinced that you killed Kurt, but maybe you know shit that you're keeping a secret. I, I, all I can tell you is I'm the same as anybody else. I don't know if he killed himself or somebody killed him. I've always had this feeling... That he I was just killed think it would be via, via um, Courtney Love and all the bullshit that came out. But I think on the day that I even went there, I, I just had this vibration, but I don't know those I people. I just think it would be safer for you, man, if, like, 
No. If you worked for Courtney, you should probably just admit that and then say... Dude, I've never worked for Courtney one fucking day in my life. No, not but you should probably let me finish what I was going to say. All right. If you worked for Courtney, then you should probably just say to somebody, if it's not going to be me, that you know who's involved with killing Kurt. That's the only way you're going to clear your name without a polygraph. You're trying to ask me for something that is something I would absolutely not know. I know that I don't know Courtney. I know that my band, the girls told me that they kind of, we passed them by, and I guess I sent you the thing that shows that we even played some gigs with them, but I don't know them. I never sat down and conspired with her as a musician yeah. to another music. No. I'm not just trying didn't. to persuade, persuade you to say something. I'm just like, if you do know, I'm telling you man to man, you'll be uh, safe. I'm just telling you. You'll be well, safe. You know, listen, you do this strange thing, and I think it is strange. I'm just going to say it to you, not insulting you, but it is unusual that you can't understand that I've already told you. I don't know Courtney. No one ever contracted me to do a thing. They never bought my house in Tarzana. I bought it of my own money. There is no, no, and no. It did not happen. There was no me running around with the wig when Ellen DeGeneres bought a house or sold a house or whatever it was between Courtney. I was not her assistant. I never helped them move. I own a hair salon, and why would I fucking go to help someone? Like, you know, I don't give a fuck who it is. I'm not going to help them move. I don't even help myself move. If I move my house, I'm going to have a mover move. Amen. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. I'm speechless. I'm just telling you. What do you think? It's like, I, you know, I might be a bum, but I'm not that much of a bum. I was going to send you some documents showing. This property that I still own is three million bucks. I'm in a fight with my brother. It's so exhausting, man. Fucking to get my so what? My okay, to look, on my family. Look. He's still alive. Three million dollars. He's still fucking alive. It's, all right, I just have one fucking question for you, and that's it. I'll fuck off. All right. Yeah. Why did you? Okay. No. Yeah. All right. Why did you tell me you had a friend at Geffen? Obviously, you know that's strange, and I'm not telling you to tell me their name. But is that true or what? This, she told me, when I told her about all this stuff, she says, Danny, I worked for for Danny, um, I didn't know that until okay, well, a couple weeks ago. And why did, you, Danny, uh, why did you say that your family wrote you out of money because of this whole Cobain rumor thing? Like, I thought that was... It's not Cobain because of 9-11, September 11th, 2001. That's why they wrote you out of money. And because I said that I think it's inside, because I, well, I flat out know it is. And, but also before, just before that, I became a Christian. I was born a Jew, but I'm a Christian. Mm. All right, well. So when I went to a family party, my family, and I said this on the tape, but it went so fast and rambly sounding. So listen to this. I go walk into the party. Hey, Danny, how's everything going? What's going on? Hey, you guys, I'm a Christian. I was baptized and everything. I became a Christian. I never connected with Judaism, but I do connect with Christianity. Bingo. So my dad is disgusted. My dad is like, oh my God, listen to this fucking kid. And I also, just prior to that, there was the aliens. You know, it was, um, so this has got to be, my dad died in 2000. My mom died in 2004, so it's 96. It's around 96, just before Linda and I split up, and we might have even been split up. No, we had to have been split up, because if I'm a Christian, that's when the day that I became a Christian is the day that I played an event at Magic Wednesdays. It's an underground techno. I was playing electronic music, a totally different genre. And I was flipped out to see the stories that's where they get all confused but it's that's how i'm remembering the times and dates only because i'm reflecting on incidents that happened do you understand that mm -hmm. so july i thought it was july 6th but it turns out that that event was actually um june 6th because the event 
was pl I played with this guy named Michael Dog. Michael Dog has a record company, Planet Dog, and I love their fucking music. Eat Static is the name of the band. So, my the band I was in, Mark Trance, who overdosed me on this acid, and people will say you can't overdose. They just believe me, dude. I flipped the fuck out. And um, I had a brand new Azusa Trooper. It was brand new. I owned it. It was mine. And my wife and I always kind of separated little things like that. Like, mm, that's another part of the story that you got to understand. My wife and I were having a, a huge tension, Ryan's mother, from 1990. Because we had an agreement before Ryan was even born, before, she, before I even got her pregnant. Our deal was we would sell our house in West Hills, we would, no matter whether the economy was strong or weak, we were going to move to Crescent City, California. That's a more, much more rural community, way up north. It's literally, you can walk over the border onto Oregon. That's Crescent City's the very last town in California. And she agreed, and I was searching for property for a long time, and I'd found several houses... I found business opportunities all over the place to build another hair salon. So we were going to sell, oh, 1990, I didn't build my, my own shop until 92, but I did have a partnership with Silvio Cabot. And that's a, he's a very successful film producer, but I tell no court and he don't read into it weird. It's just how it is. He's a... Um, 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 a good guy. He's a great guy. He was a great partnership. And we broke it off, though, because there was some recession problems. Really, what broke it off was I had told him he had to renegotiate the lease for a full 10-year lease instead of buying the last three years of the old owner's lease. 10-year lease, but the last three years of the 10, the guy defaulted. So, Silvio says to me, he did it, and he made sure that that was done great. Well, three years later, we had to close the shop because he did not do it. He simply picked up the last three years of the old lease. And I'm like, man, I got to close a shop that's fucking so beautiful. It's jamming so hard at Venter Boulevard. It's prime. I'm Silvio, and I know the owner, Nasser Matlu, really well. Are you ready? Do you want to hear this story? It's too much. I'm trying to go slow so it's clear to you. But uh, I was going to buy that salon for pennies on the dollar because I knew the owner who I worked for was going out of business. And so I took all the staff from that salon down the street and I was in a temporary shop that I established and all the hairdressers were there with me and now they're getting paid again. The old owner was not paying us. He owed me like three months back rent and everybody else three months. And nobody could survive doing that. So we left him. It was a beautiful shop. Righteous, but he had no staff. Well, Nasser Matloub and I have an arrangement that, and he's checked my finances and everything. He knows that I cannot swing it, but not at full face value. So if Michael defaults, then he would give me the shop and I would move immediately right back in with the staff and continue working and pay rent. So he calls me on the phone at the little um, um, salon that we were stashed away in and he says, um, Danny, th there's no deal. He, he got a partner. And I'm like, what the point? Who would go in there and even partner with the guy that he was that fucking far behind in his rent and, and his bills? Man, I do care, and but, like, what's the relevance? The relevance is the time. This is how I can mark time. So I remember key issues that happen in my life, and they will give me the time and date right. okay. of the incidents. So this is, that's what I'm saying. But it is also relevant um, because it's the same staff. I have all the same staff. The same the people I've known, my hairdressers, 17, 20 years, they know me. They're not going to bullshit for me or anything. They know me, so... Man, like, I just, like, why didn't you just lie? Like, you would have been a lot... You would have got a lot more... 
lie about what? Like, I don't know how to lie, I just, man. I don't, just don't. People say that's a weird cute thing also. Yeah, I understand, man. It's just like, regardless of how your name got thrown out there, you know, the first thing you said on the phone was, I just happened to be there. Like, you just have to understand, for someone like me, it's fucking mind-boggling, dude. It's just like, I didn't say, I said that I was in the hotel room when I heard it on the TV. And at that time, I really, really loved Nirvana. And that brings me to the story of how I got to Nirvana, because I'm 37 fucking years old, right? I'm an old grunge. I'm not into grunge. I'm into music. You're missing so my point, man. Music. My point but, is, is that you were at his house the day he was down there. Yeah, but I had to leave the hotel. They said Lake Washington. If they didn't say Lake Washington, I would have had no idea where to go. So when I heard Lake Washington, I checked, and they said it was very close, like 14 or 15 miles away. So I figured, because I saw the picture of the view, it was over the house. It didn't show, it, it must have shown the room, because I did know what I was looking for. So I don't know how to explain that to you. There has been, um, to this day, there's so many photographs that I can see that were from the film that they broadcast, like from some sort of a, a broadcasting. Anyways, it showed the greenhouse over the roof and it showed the hills kind of of Lake Washington. And, and I've got to say, I apologize because realistically, my memory sees the Lake Washington view. My memory sees, but it doesn't see the house in particular. It just shows a view. And I took a long shot, Dolly, to understand this. If I couldn't have found the house, I did not expect to find it. I would have turned around and gone back to the hotel room, and that's it. I tried. But I happened to find it. It was, uh, to me, even at that time. And how far like away was your hotel? It was like a miracle hole in one shot. How far away was your hotel again, sorry? I guess from Seattle, I'm in downtown Seattle. Exactly which hotel, I don't know. But I do know this. We always stay in nice hotels. A Hilton, a... Well, I'll tell you what, man. Isn't that like a two-hour drive? I don't think so. It's, I don't think it was... Oh, it took me about two hours to find it from the time I left. Maybe it's about an hour, maybe more than an hour. I would say less than two, but more than an hour... It would take, yeah, it took me time. But even, I think it's only 14 or 15 miles away. What I did was I got to the lake, and I had to cross over, like, some bridges, like these little river outlets or whatever. And there was a convenience store next to a little restaurant thinking it was like a sushi kind of thing, but I think it was a deli, like a little deli, a small coffee, not a coffee shop, right. a deli, you know, outside eating, people were sitting outside. So I kind of pulled over, and I go into the convenience side of the deli, which combination convenience store and a deli or restaurant. Ask the guy, does he know where that house is? And he says he doesn't know. He says, but if you um, just follow the lake around, and I said, fine. So, you know, I know that there's, look, the lake is a circle, but I could tell from the view that it was looking from, I can't say if it's, it was, no, I would say, yeah, actually I can. North, the picture was looking north further into Washington State. Right. So, um, I would have to be on the, what I call the um, north side of the lake. Now, I could be wrong. I have a pilot's, you know, license, and I should know my north and south. So right there, I'm just not sure, but I, I would venture to say it's the south side. So I'm heading east, and so I can see the lake. I can see the mountains and well, there was you are right it is only a 15 minute drive from downtown Seattle to uh, Kurt's house right because if it was like two hours or something I think it took me about two hours to really 
find it is what I'm saying, but I wouldn't have even ventured. That's what blew my mind about somebody went 195 miles from my house here to my in-laws house. That's 195 miles. Somebody was definitely bound and determined. If it was 195 miles to go to see Kurt Cobain's house, I never would have fucking gone. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to let you go because I yeah. got some things I got to do before I head into work tomorrow morning. can't believe it's but midnight right now. I'm just having you, but I'm working on so many things. But, Dolly, um, that's just the fact. The, all I can tell you as a human being to another, without any hesitation, I don't know those people. I did not set foot three days before that on that property, no matter what. Anybody wants to push an issue, and if that's what I say. I'm getting kind of annoyed because you're pushing this issue. I told you so clearly. Yeah. Shit, man, well, I had nothing to do with killing Kurt Cobain. I don't do fucking air when I've never done it. Well, I smoked look, it like two or three times in my look, life. I'm, I'm going to back the fuck up off of you, and you'll see how much people will still bug you even though I'm not saying anything. It's a, you know what I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna still look because you got me going again and I do want it do want to accomplish what you want you want to see the death threats they did come I'm not finding them very easily I, mean, I did get and they're not like death threats I'm gonna come over and kill you dude they're just saying hey motherfucker hope you go to prison that kind of shit but when people say things like that it's threatening you know somebody's using their energy to call me a fucking murderer it's weird. Uh, the one who I feel threatened by is Dean Summers. And you've already explained that to me. You don't have to do it again. I don't hold you accountable for his bullshit. You already introduced me to Chris Todd. I believe that you guys understood what I was saying. If not, then so be it. Let him continue with his... I would think he would want me to have a lie detector test. Let him pay for it. Shit. No, he doesn't believe in them. Oh, if he doesn't believe in them. that uh, I've never taken a lie detector test in my life. I'm telling you the absolute truth so i don't know what's in tight what's entailed in it i don't know yeah all right man well, my voice gets all go. stressed out i noticed that on the film that i get all that that horse kind of thing because it's a stress thing or whatever but right. you know i'm getting older bro i am getting older i was 37 then if it's 30 years ago i'm 67 now shit it's 30 years is crazy man that's crazy well, I'll let you go, man, but we'll see. Uh, bro, I, I'm not trying to, you know, I do stay up late, and I do, uh, um, you know, I'm alive, thank God. I definitely walk a shitload slower. My, I had a deep vein thrombosis, and Ryan, like I said on the tape, I am sick. There's no doubt about it, I'm sick. I hope I can get more years out of it, like a good medication to come on. If something doesn't come on, it's not going to be good. And I also have a hernia in my stomach, and that hernia is from when I had my house, Virginia. Now, we'll get into Virginia later. That's where I think it all derived from, Virginia Collins, and it derived from her boyfriend, who's the film editor, out of Vivid. And there's Matt Richter. There was a Seattle um, writer. His name is... Um, Schmidt or something like that, and it's, that's the last name. His first name is. He worked in a Seattle newspaper. He works in a, a Seattle newspaper that was called. I'm just, just skipping my mind. Shit, I hate it. When that's I do that. Okay, man, but I gotta let you go. All okay, right? go, go, bro. I'll talk to you later. I'll right, talk to we'll you. Later. Talk to I'm you. here. I'm right here, so I'm not going anywhere. Fuck. All right. Sounds good. Same to you, man. All right. All right bye. Bye. -bye.